we got a we got a couple of I actually have a few news stories. Uh, it's actually kind of been a bit bit big on news these past couple days. Um. So, uh, firstly, uh, top of the hour. Uh, the demo for Delta Force is out right now. Uh, it came out yesterday. It's running until the 21st of October at the time of this, uh, stream. Um, well, stream slash recording. So the demo just came out yesterday. I've been playing uh, a little bit. I played a few matches last night. Uh, I've been having an absolute blast. It is fucking amazing. Uh, I'm actually going to be getting around to... I'm, I'm, I, I think I actually bought a bundle containing like the old Delta Force because I didn't know this, but Delta Force has apparently been around since like the the the, the early like PS1 days. So uh, it's considered like a classic military FPS. So that that'll be fun to play at some point. But yeah, no, uh, Delta Force. Uh, it was called Delta Force Hawk Ops. It was revealed a couple of years ago, I think, at the Game Awards. Uh, but they recently renamed it to just Delta Force. Uh, right now in the demo, there's only two modes. There's Havoc Warfare, and then there's uh, whatever their Extraction Shooter mode is called. I didn't play it. I'm not an Extraction Shooter person. Um, but it's fun. Uh, I had a lot of fun with Havoc Warfare. Cannot wait for the game to come out. It's going to be free to play. Although I think it is going to have a campaign, and I think the campaign is going to be paid, which I wouldn't be surprised if it is. But, you know, Delta Force, uh, if you are if you have the capabilities to play it, um, then absolutely go play it. It is well worth your time, and possibly well, well worth your money, depending on uh, what the monetization is going to look like with that game. But it's fun. It's a nice Battlefield. It's a nice Battlefield clone. Uh, since Battlefield has, um, unfortunately not been in the best state right now. Uh, but on top of that, probably the biggest news story this week was, uh, the recent Game Freak leaks. Um, how big was this leak exactly? Hold on. Uh, God, I can't. Look up Game Freak leak without the big fucking part of this leak being what everyone is talking about right now. Um, I can't seem to find a number on how big this leak was, but it contained a lot of stuff. Now, I gotta be a little bit careful on what I talk about here because these are leaks at the end of the day. And given that poke it's a lot of a lot of it's Pokemon related, I should specify. And obviously, you know, Pokemon is owned by Nintendo. And um I gotta be careful about talking about leaks, otherwise I will get fucking nuked to Helen back. Um So you have a lot of the usual stuff, which I mean this is the unfortunate part about about it is all a lot of like personal information on like the devs and all that getting like that that's never good um please don't uh go after developers um but they 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 talked about a lot of there's a lot of stuff uh and a lot of things uh a lot of things having to deal with a particular pokemon by the name of Typhlosion I don't I'm probably not going to get into that any further um but there was like character design leaks, lore, uh, like lore that they just wrote and probably just decided not to use. I I don't know. I don't know. I actually I'm gonna be completely honest. I didn't look into the leaks that often, uh, except for the Typhlosion stuff, which it is that is fucking wild that that actually exists and they actually wrote that. But anyway, uh, that's all I will say. Uh, in terms of the the Pokemon leaks, because I don't want to get the uh, I don't want to get smacked down by uh, by Nintendo. Um, I tell you one thing's for certain though, whoever the hacker was that leaked all this shit, they're in fucking hiding, and I do not blame them one bit. They just fucking 
Ah, uh, they they poked the hornet's nest big time. Uh, like apparently the dude uh who leaked all of that stuff like locked their they like locked all of their accounts like all their user accounts in any fuck in like any forum, every type of uh space like no one at this moment knows who exactly it was that hacked uh Game Freak, but uh, I tell you one thing for something because you know that um. Remember the story of the guy who leaked GTA 6? And he's like, what? what? What's the deal with the GTA 6 leaker? Like, what are they having him do? Uh, well, because, okay, so there's the GTA 6 leaker, and there was the one leak from Nintendo where they, the, this, the person, like, literally has to give a portion of their own income to Nintendo because of, the, like, the massive leak that this person did. Um, hold on. Uh, who leaked clips of forthcoming GTA games and sent to an indefinite hospital order? Yeah, so that that's the state on that person. Um, which is fucking wild. Uh, but aside from that, the other. The other interesting thing is, um, Concord may be coming back. Uh, because apparently there were some of the Steam files that ended up getting updates, uh, over the weekend, which is very interesting, which I can't say I'm surprised to hear about this because I, I remember in their, um, in Firewalks, like, blog posts, they were talking about how, like, oh, we're gonna look at some stuff and bring it, sort of, like, do something that makes it good for the players. Something along the lines of that. Basically, uh, is a telltale sign that I think Concord is gonna go free to play, and I think we'll see it very soon. Um, I won't be entirely surprised. Uh, because, you know, given that they supposedly, right, put $400 million into the goddamn game. That's like the reported estimate of how big this game's budget was. For a live service game that cost $40. Um, but yeah, no, apparently some of the backend Steam files got updates for Concord. It's probably gonna go free to play. As to when, we don't know. Um, because we... In terms of, like, the, the the hero shooter side of things, I think Marvel Rivals is set to come out in December? Or at least they're... I think they're doing a beta. They might be doing a beta in December. Hold on. Let me see. Marvel Rivals. Is there a release date on this? I think there was. If Steam will load. Okay, nope, it comes out December 6th. So, uh, a little under two months now. Um, and I know everybody's probably gonna be playing that when it comes out. Myself included. Which, speaking of Marvel stuff, uh, quick side note. I started playing Marvel's Midnight Suns. It's really fun. I, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, the card gameplay kind of, you know, threw me off a bit. Kind of reminds me of, like... Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories a tad bit, but it's fun. I'm enjoying it. Um, but you know, aside from that, yeah, I'm not entirely surprised to see this. They, they're definitely going to try and make whatever money they can uh, off of this uh, to try and write off as not a total complete loss. Uh, who knows? Who knows what happens? Um, I do still think, though, if, the, if they just made it free to play to begin with, it would have been in a better state than it was at launch. Because, obviously, I think that, I mean, the, the two big problems with that game was the fact that it was, they released it in an oversaturated market, and on top of that, they released it at $40. And I'm not paying $40 for a live service, um, hero shooter in a oversaturated market. Um... So, yeah. <laughs> well, who knows? May if it if it does go to free go free to play, I'll probably give it a look at. 
because it gives me an excuse to see what see if maybe there's something good about it who knows we'll wait and see but this does unfortunately mean that if it does get re-released as a free-to-play game uh the number of players who get the platinum trophy is probably going to increase from 69 which is not nice who knows maybe whatever community comes out of concord decides to be respectful to the 69 players and uh respects their the 69 player platinum trophy who knows uh only time will tell but all i know is if it comes out at any point around marvel rivals release date they're gonna get fucked <laughs> so um man yeah, no there's the concord news did they gotta be talking about concord this soon after its downfall but who knows again we'll wait and see uh but the last story i'm gonna talk about tonight and it's very topical because i'm playing destiny 2 um at the time of this uh bungie has officially announced bungie has definitely has uh, announced that um destiny rising is a thing now that exists or is going to be a thing uh so if you guys don't know uh, Destiny Rising is an upcoming mobile game. An upcoming Destiny mobile game. Um, that is also being, uh, uh, I think it's either being developed or published by NetEase. I'm not entirely sure, but the fact that... Hey, Axolotl, how's it going? Um, the fact that NetEase is in part of this Destiny mobile game, a lot of people are like... Is this going to be Destiny's Diablo Immortal? Which, if you guys don't remember the whole controversy around Diablo Immortal, is that, like, pretty alright game, honestly. Like, from I, I actually have played it a little bit on my own uh, uh, a few times in the past. I need to get back onto it. It's a pretty... It's, like a, it's, it's a good Diablo game. The problem with it is that it's a microtransaction slob. Like, there, there was that news story of the guy who spent $10,000 to get the fucking five-star shard or whatever. Which is absolutely wild. And it does make me very worried about, um, about, about this, uh, about this Destiny game. Uh, oh, but they, they had a thing, they had a reveal thing this week, or this past week, where they kind of talked about it, um... It's going to be set in an alternate universe or an alternate timeline. Uh, and I think it's going to be like alternate timeline around because apparently the what are they what are they called? Not the warlords. I think it's the warlords. Uh, basically, uh, like just around after the Dark Ages, which is weird because this was a type of setting of game that I wanted from Destiny, where it's like, okay, I'd like a game where we kind of uh, play during or like a, maybe a little bit after the Dark Ages. Because in this game, we see like a very younger Ikora Ray. Um, and then this like before Guardians were like officially a thing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's kind of weird. Um, but I do appreciate that it is going to be an alternate timeline and has no bearing on the overall plot of destiny one and destiny two because otherwise you're looking at a kingdom hearts situation where suddenly you gotta get the mobile game you gotta get your freaking psp game you gotta get your uh freaking i don't know what what obscure gaming console can i think of uh, tiger electronics there you go you gotta get your tiger electronics version of uh destiny in order to understand the story and plot behind uh, um final shape sorry to break it to you this way um but yeah uh someone i did actually see a comment because bife did a whole video on it which i recommend go looking at uh someone in his comment section made up a good made a good point is that the only way we could probably see this tying in somewhat to the main series is having um Elsie, Elsie Bray, the the unknown, uh, uh, what are they called? The the unknown Exo, the Exo Stranger, uh, because Elsie's entire thing is that she can go between like timelines and alternate dimensions and universes, and they they could probably have her fit into the narrative 
in a way that sort of makes sense. Uh, as well as, you know, the Vax being the Vax. But apparently they're doing like an alpha test on uh, the 1st of November, I think I remember reading correctly. So I'll, I'll probably take a look at it if my phone can run it. Uh, I'm just on the same boat as a lot of other people. I'm just afraid as to what the microtransactions are going to look like and how heavily monetized it's going to be. Hopefully isn't too bad. Uh, because as we all know, as Destiny 2 players, Destiny 2 is already a monetized mess. I haven't bought anything on the Eververse store since maybe the Displacer Beast uh, armor. And I think the ship that I currently use now. But even then, I think I got that from uh, uh, from Bright Dust. Anyway. But yeah, no. Destiny Rising is a game that exists that just got announced. Uh, again, as with a lot of other things... Uh, only time will tell if this game is good or if it will run into the Diablo Mortal uh, situation of it just being an over heavily monetized mess that no one wants to waste money on. Um, even though Immortal did make Blizzard a fuckload of cash, uh, this is, which is probably the reason why Bungie uh is doing this but yeah uh that's basically about it for uh this new segment so uh yeah it was neat uh i do have one quick news story uh, it involves the nouveau because they decided to start a discord server and they shut it down within two days because people were being mad at them because Wait, fucking Dunovo, Denuvo. Um, apparently, uh, Metaphor, um, didn't have Denuvo specifically in its demo. Uh, so people have cracked the game and now it's, like, freely piratable. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah. Uh, note to self, kids, if you are gonna use Denuvo, uh, you might want to put that in your demo as well as the base game, but, you know, it is what it is. Clear, Monster Hunter is getting Denuvo as its, uh, anti-pirating software. Yay, more games I won't want to play, but still will, because, I don't know, at this point we just download malware to play video games, shrug. Yeah, yeah. they, it was like that for World 2 when they first started, but, uh, they removed it, uh, and they're going back? Yeah, yeah, they do it every time. They install it uh, just for their first, like, sale window to make sure that that doesn't get pirated. And then they're like, well, we know that you've suffered long enough. And then after a couple months, they remove it. Delicious. Which, you know, they, should be the they, norm. The only one they didn't do that to was for Rise because it was on Switch. And it probably wouldn't have ran. <laughs> Anyway, I uh, cracked Monster Hunter Rise. <laughs> so anyway, I started blasting.